Good morning. Today we are here to discuss a critical and life-changing decision, the selection of a heart transplant candidate. This process is not just a medical decision. It is a profound ethical and emotional journey as well. This is Ways to a Heart, and I'm Evelyn Bachner. I'm Gabriel Lamana. I'm Jocelyn Sarah. And I'm Valentina Herrera. The research question we're doing today is, what criteria we used in order to choose a heart uh, transplant? The criteria we used is likelihood for success, medical urgency, and background. With the help of this criteria, we thought it'd be best to choose patient A. Patient A would be the best candidate to receive the heart. Social situation. She's been sober for 14 months. Sobriety for a long time proves that she can keep a long, healthy lifestyle uh, needed for a successful recovery. Has a child six years old. As a mother, having a child, especially as young, six years old, will keep her motivated to stay dedicated to her treatment. It is also crucial for a child to have a mother while growing up. Job. She has a job, uh, a job proving that she will be able to stay financially stable and that um, after being able to pursue the job, she will be able to stay uh, good after her procedure. Economic situation. Evaluating the potential outcomes of a transplant involves assessing not only medical and social factors, but economic implications as well. This includes analyzing the likelihood of a successful outcome and the quality of life, the expected quality of life post-transplant. Candidates who are more likely to benefit significantly from the transplants are the ones that should be prioritized, which is why in this scenario we chose candidate A. Heart transplants are extremely expensive and, have, and having insurance ensures that the financial burdens that come with the procedure can be covered. Taking into consideration the fact that our candidate's company's insurance covered her entire rehabilitation led us to believe that it would also help to cover the many costs of a heart transplant. Looking at the graph associated cost of a heart transplant, we see a multitude of financial factors that make up the overall cost of the procedure. As of January 2020, the, o the estimated overall cost of a heart transplant in the United States is $1,664,800 before accounting for insurance. When choosing a patient, we looked for the likelihood for success for each patient. By doing so, we looked at the overall health, support, and age of each patient. We looked to see if they have health conditions which could prevent or disrupt a heart transplant. These could be caused by being an active smoker, drinker, or other conditions in addition to having a heart problem. We also looked to see if they were supported by family or friends who were willing to support them after surgery, or if their workplace supported them by providing them with company insurance in order to pay for most of the operation. We also looked to see at a patient's age. If they were over the age of 50, it was an indicator for us that the patient that we would select would automatically have a lower success rate than most of the other patients, which is why we also chose a patient who was relatively young. On the next slide is a graph that I constructed based off the research from Penn Medicine. It shows the success rate in heart transplants after five years of receiving one. We chose four different categories, the first category being active substance abusers, which is 15%, and the patient that will fall into this category will be patient C. The second category that we chose were patients who are over the age of 50, the success rate for this being 36%, and the patient that will fall into this category will be patient B at the age of 59. The third category would be patients who have no family or work support, and the, patient, and the success rate would be 50%, and the patient that will fall into this category would be patient D. The last category is for patients who have support, who are under the age of 50, and who are not active substance abusers. The patient that we believe fit into this category was patient A, which is also why we chose her to receive the heart transplant. Although many may argue that she would fit into the first category of being an active substance abuser because she did suffer from alcoholism, we believe that she will not, will not relapse because she has already proven herself by being 14 months sober and she has a six-year-old daughter who she needs to raise. Overall, we chose patient A because we believe she would have the highest likelihood for success when receiving a heart transplant. The last criteria we chose was medical urgency. There are six active tiers based on medical urgency by the Heart Transplant National Allocation System. This means that status one to two is very critical. They live in the hospital and they can't leave. They need the heart and they're not gonna survive for more than a month. Status three is like status one and two, but the difference is 
they're gonna live more than a month, so they don't need the heart as much as status one and two do. Status four and five are a bit different because they get to live at home, although that they still need a bunch of medication and need to be looked at all day, they still get to live at home, which proves that they don't need a heart as much. Status six is everybody else. These people are, they don't need the heart as much and are in the most stable condition. Although they still need the heart, they just don't need it as much as the other people. As you can see in this graph, there's a direct correlation between status levels and your time waiting for a heart. The, if you're status one, you're not gonna be waiting for a heart as much. We chose person A because she has been living in the hospital and in need for a heart desperately. This means she is status one or two, so she should get a heart sooner. This graph was found by UNOS. The people we didn't choose were person B. This man can't afford to pay for his medication. He also can't afford to, the surgery, so he's just gonna be in debt. Person C smokes a pack a day and doesn't have a financial support, and doesn't have a support system. Person D isn't medically as urgent. Yes, he fits all the other criteria, he doesn't need the heart as much. Person E has no support system and no insurance, so we didn't think he would be the best fit for the heart. In conclusion, this is why and how we use this criteria to help us determine that patient A would be the best candidate to receive the heart transplant. Thank you.